Good evening. Welcome to our service, Silver Lane Baptist Church. This is our Sunday night service, April 5th, and it is our Palm Sunday. And uh, our service this evening, uh, is you can trust the shepherd. Amen. And uh, so that's going to be what our, our message is about, our theme for this evening. And uh, we just pray, can't wait to have full church again. But we hope that you get to view online, and I pray that uh, you get some from the services this evening. Thank you. All right, let's sing a couple verses of Hide Thou Me. That first verse says, Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my life in vain. I'm tempted then to murmur and of my lot complain. But when I think of Jesus and all, all he's done for me, then I cry, O Rock of Ages, Hide Thou Me.
going to sing a couple verses of It Is Well With My Soul. But Mario, do you want to help me on that the chorus? That? Just keep your distance, please. Thank you. The first verse says, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Trust the shepherd. 
Psalm chapter 23. All right. We'll begin in verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we do thank you uh, for another day that you've given us to serve you. Lord, I do pray for uh, folks at home uh, watching the live stream, Lord, as well as us here, God. Uh, I just pray, Lord, that we'll get something from the service tonight, Lord. I pray that uh, we'll take these live stream services, uh, uh, although we're at home, Lord, to help us to, to take these services seriously, Lord, and to still be able to get something from your word. We're so thankful, Father, for what you've done, God, and what you're going to do. In your name we do pray. Amen. Just a few quick announcements that we do have. Uh, we uh, are just praising the Lord that Brother Dantes was able to go home. Uh, he was diagnosed with the coronavirus. He was in the hospital for some time. But praise the Lord, he is able to go home now. And uh, we uh, thank you for all those that have prayed uh, that that would uh, be able to happen. It has happened. Uh, also, we have mailed out our bulletins. We tried to mail them out early, so hopefully you have them today. And uh, so you'll have all of uh, our, our full bulletin. I know everyone enjoys those bulletins, so uh, praise the Lord. Hopefully you can be able to get those today. Uh, at this time, we'll have our, our pianist and our organist are going to play uh, some songs for you. song, He Restored My Soul in the Valley, and we just read, we just read out of Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, and uh, I guess the whole, not just Christians, but this, this whole world, we're kind of, uh, kind of in a mess right now, and, uh, but I have noticed that there's a lot of people thinking about the Lord right now and thinking about uh, eternity. And uh, I was just on the phone with a friend this afternoon uh, and uh, out of their own mouth, they're, they don't think that they're living the Christian life that they should, but uh, 
thankful for times like this because God kind of shuts everything down and uh, kind of forces us to lay down Amen. and forces us to walk instead of running everywhere. And uh, we're quarantined, and so people are thinking about things, and we've had several phone calls to our house, and they're talking about, is this the end of the world? Uh, and a friend was saying, if I ever needed to be restored, or if I ever needed to get right with the Lord, it's now. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's encouraging to me. And uh, we do need revival. The church needs to wake up. Yes. And uh, the church needs to be restored and start walking with the Lord like we, like we always should have been. Amen. So. the shepherd of the sheep. 
to him, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things were which he spake unto them. Then Jesus, uh, then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. I'm so glad for that verse, because that includes us Gentiles with the uh, uh, Jewish people that the disciples were ministering to. Verse number 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this encouraging passage about the shepherd and what a shepherd you are. Speak to our hearts this evening. Uh, Father, as our country and our state and the world deal with this coronavirus, Help us, Lord, to realize we have nothing to fear. We have you. You are watching over us as the shepherd watches over the sheep. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Through the Bible, we start maybe with Psalm 23. We have the, the, the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. We see the connection to the sheep and the shepherd even in the very beginning when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and Jesus had to kill innocent sheep to cover their sin and to make coats of skins for them as was described in Genesis chapter 3. We know that Abraham, who was referred to as the friend of God, that he offered his son Isaac but then God gave him a lamb substitute for his son. We also know, continuing on scriptures that deal with the lamb, that in Exodus 12, it took innocent lambs to save a family uh, from the death angel in Egypt. In Isaiah 53, we have a passage where all we, like sheep, have gone astray but he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. It's so important to get these. He was silent is what that means. Then we know from John chapter 1 that John the Baptist identified Jesus who was born in a shepherd's manger as the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The most identified name, and this is Palm Sunday, the most identified name with Jesus the Messiah is the Lamb of God. John uses it, and it's used exclusively in the book of Revelation. And I've said all that and tried to bring you to the idea that there's much that, that God says about the shepherd and the sheep. But I want to tell you this evening that you can trust the shepherd, and he is still seen in heaven, 
as the one the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. As we look to this passage in John chapter 10, this great, great passage on the shepherd and the sheep, he says that he is the door of the sheepfold. He is the enclosure. No one can get in or get out without him. He said in John 14 that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is the door. He's the only door. He's the only way. He's the straight way. He is the way to heaven and eternal life. You must be born again. He is the only hope of eternal life. Or, if you leave the scriptures, you must go to somebody's opinion or some religion's idea. I remember studying history about Florida and Ponce de Leon when he was searching Florida for the fountain of youth. Florida is, is, a, is a name that means flowers, and it was such a beautiful place, and they thought, surely there must be a fountain of eternal youth in Florida. Of course, he did not find that. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In Ephesians chapter 4, he said there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Just one. You remember even as we go back to the ark, and we've heard several references uh, to the ark uh, because they were quarantined from the rest of the world and from the judgment of God for up to a year. There was only eight people saved, but the scripture was very specific when God had Noah build the ark that there was only one door and God shut the door of the ark. And here he tells us in John chapter 10 that he is the door. He is the only shepherd who cares for the sheep. He comforts the sheep. He is the water of life, if you please. He's eternal refreshment. The woman at the well who saw who Jesus was and realized he was the Messiah, she said, come see a man that told me uh, all that ever I did. Is not this the Messiah? He is the words of life, which we're reading here. The eternal word, the eternal food, if you please. That that brings life to the believer. That's how we learn about Jesus. That's how we have fellowship with Jesus, through his word. He is the place of rest. You can trust in the shepherd. You can have rest in your heart. There's a lot of people you can see that do not have rest. They're full of fear. And uh, yes, we're fearful of certain things and concerned about certain things concerning this virus. And we certainly applaud the doctors and nurses and those that are working around the clock uh, to help us in this horrible virus. But we can have peace in our heart. We thank the Lord for Pastor Dantes, who went in last week and came out uh, one week later. It was, seemed like it was touch and go for a while, but as we received his text, he texted uh, over 100 people to encourage them day by day. He had peace in his heart and in his mind because of the promises of the scriptures even though he was facing life or death with the coronavirus. Thank God he's home and making good recovery. Jesus is not only the shepherd, but he's the shepherd who was the lamb that died for the sheep. He is called the good shepherd that giveth his life for the sheep. He giveth his life to do what? So he could conquer sin and conquer the penalty of sin physically and eternally and spiritually. He is the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep and gives us power over sin. Thank God we don't have to live in sin. He is the good shepherd. Not only that, but he's the shepherd that giveth his life for the sheep so he dies that they might live and they might have life more abundantly, not just life, but life more abundantly and life eternally. 
So he goes to the cross willingly. He is dying for the sheep, so he will conquer death, the, a horrible death. Not only that, he will go to the grave for the sheep. And after three days, he will conquer the grave and come out of the grave to prove that he is God and he is the eternal life. He is the resurrection and the life. So he conquers death, he conquers the grave, and then finally, he conquers the universe when he ascends up into the clouds in the heaven. He is the shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. Not only is he the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep, but thirdly, he is the great shepherd that gives us power over sin. He says in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will. He is not only the good shepherd, he is the great shepherd that gives us power uh, as a good shepherd, he gives us power over uh, sin. The, and the great shepherd, he gives us power uh, over our, our life. Uh, and he remains the lamb that is slain. In Revelation 5, 6, he says he appears as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And he will remain the lamb slain. For when the disciples saw Jesus after he resurrected, he had the prints of the nails in his hand. He spoke specifically to Thomas, that Thomas would uh, look at his hands and put his finger in his hands. He still had a body, obviously, that was the Lord Jesus. He was not a spirit. He was not an angel. So for all eternity, he identifies himself as a lamb slain and bears the mark of the cross so we can remember how much he loves us. He cares for us. You can trust the shepherd. Can you see everything? No. But he can. You see, he's the great shepherd. Can you know about everything that's going on? And boy, we have a lot that we get on the internet and, and uh, looking at different sites and so forth. And there's a lot of in misinformation along with information. But can you know everything? No. But he knows all. Can you understand everything and all that's going on? No. But he understands all because he made all and by him all things consist. He is the shepherd who knows the sheep. Not only is he the good shepherd, not only is he the great shepherd, he is the chief shepherd who, who will in the end remove us from the presence of sin. I, uh, my wife and I got to take a trip to Israel uh, uh, back several years ago and uh, we were on a small tour bus and I happened to read about a tour that had happened years earlier and the guides were all trained of course and uh, when they came upon a, uh, a shepherd and a flock or whatever he would usually make the designation that the Jewish shepherds were different than the European shepherds. And he indicated that the European shepherds used dogs and they would drive the sheep. But Jewish shepherds, they would lead their sheep, like Psalm 23. And wouldn't you know it, as the tour uh, bus was coming along the way, they ran across a shepherd and some sheep, and he was not leading them, he was driving them down the road. And the tour guide was very upset, especially after making such a big uh, deal about the, the, the difference between the European shepherds and the Jewish shepherds. So he made the tour bus stop and 
He wanted to get out and talk to this shepherd to find out it just disturbed him so much. <clears throat> and so he got out of the tour bus and went up to the shepherd and got his attention and said, Sir, sir, Jewish shepherds never drive the sheep. Why are you driving sheep? This doesn't look right. <clears throat> and the shepherd, or who he thought was the shepherd, said, I'm not the shepherd. I'm the butcher. I'm taking the sheep to market. <clears throat> and that's the difference between the Lord, our shepherd, and the earthly shepherds and the satanic who would destroy the sheep. A thief, he said in verse number nine, uh, comes in not, not but for to steal and to kill <clears throat> and to destroy. <clears throat> so he is the shepherd who can see all, knows all, and understands all. He is the shepherd who knows his sheep. Turn, if you will, back again to Psalm 23. And let me see if I can make an application for today. It's one of the most comforting uh, psalms to anybody that's gone through great difficulty. I think David understood it very well. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not why? Because he will provide everything that we need, good and bad. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He is the good shepherd when you are lying down and you are well, and he's the good shepherd when you lie down and you're sick in a hospital bed. It says, he leadeth me beside the still waters, and yes, he is the shepherd when he leads us beside the still waters. But let me tell you this, he's also the shepherd on troubled waters. You remember the disciples many times were on a raging sea with Jesus. So he's the shepherd when it's peaceful waters, still waters. He's also the shepherd in troubled waters. I'm remembering the great preacher and songwriter John Newton who had been a slave trader and been a, 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 a vile sinner according to his own testimony. And yet one time in a storm, he felt like as if this was going to be the end. And he cried out to Jesus to save him from his vile sins, and he did. And he had peace in his soul in a raging storm. So when the storms of life are raging around you, you can have peace in your soul. He makes us to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. One of the interesting things about Palm Sunday this morning is the first time that Jesus rode on a donkey. He always walked because he walks with the disciples. He walks with his people and he walks with you. And I, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. There are times we walk with him for our parents, for relatives, yes, even sometimes for our children and our friends. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He has been there, and he will be there with you. And he says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He'll give you something to eat when the enemies are hard against you. When it seems like there is no way out, he will help you. And then finally, I like this. He said, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And we think of the good Samaritan that helped the man in Jericho who was beaten by thieves and robbers. And it says he poured in the oil for his wounds. The use for oil when we need healing and we need comforting. I said earlier that he said in John 10, he's the good shepherd. In Hebrews chapter 13, he's the great shepherd. And 
Finally, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, when he talks about the rewards at the end, he is the chief shepherd who will save us, thank God, from the presence of sin. And we will live forever in the house of the Lord. Thank God that he is the lamb slain. In Revelation, he calls himself the lamb 26 times, more than any other book in the Bible, the term lamb is used as a title. There is a song, and I, I always like to look at the history of our songs. There was a young couple back many years ago, Brother and Mrs. Stead, Louisa Stead. She had come from England, and at around 21 years of age, she surrendered herself to be a missionary in a camp meeting in urban Ohio. She married Mr. Stead and had a little girl, four-year-old girl named Lily, and they were preparing their lives to go to the mission field, and they were going to be shepherds. They were going to lead people to Christ and build churches, and uh, they were so excited about the, the, the prospects before them. And they were going one fine day in, in Long Island Sound in New York and they went to the park and they were enjoying the day and the, the water and the sand and the sun. And while they were enjoying that day, there was a 16-year-old boy out in the surf who began to drown, began crying out for help. Mr. She uh, Mr. Stead jumped up and uh, ran into the surf to save this young man. And as this happens in many cases, the young man wrapped his arms in locks just like a, like a vice around him and they both drowned in the surf. Mrs. Stead watched her husband give his life for a young man. It was some very dark days for Louisa. Why would God do such a thing? They were going to be a pastor and a pastor's wife and lead people to Christ and, and especially people in, in Africa. It was during this difficulty that she wrote, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." Let me give you a couple of verses. She wrote, this time, this dark time, she's, she's wondering what God is doing, but she knows that she can trust Jesus. "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." Just to take him at his word, she wrote, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing flood. Finally, she wrote, I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust him more. She did go later as a missionary to Africa. And one African gave this testimony. He said at any given time during a service, there are 5,000 Africans singing, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Her husband gave his life for one sheep. But God was not done with Louisa. He used her to minister and help others in Africa. We thank the Lord for those who give their lives for the sheep. Let me say this on a personal note. The hardest thing for a shepherd is to be removed from his flock. I certainly covet your prayers for that because it feels very difficult to try to minister to our congregation. I do it the best I can with the phone, text messages, and hopefully these live streaming are making a difference. Let me say this again. You can trust the shepherd. Let me pray. Father, thank you for giving us such great promises in the Bible. Thank you for giving us such great illustrations of yourself 
as the Lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. Thank you for the testimony of Christians down through the ages, like this Louisa said and her husband, that prove the goodness of God and the promises of God. Help us in this difficult time to learn to trust you. Lord, that others could see that we have a treasure. We have a confidence. We have a peace because we have Jesus. Thank you so much, God. All right, we're going to sing that chorus, God is Still on the Throne.